I'll have to check and see. Um, I believe so. Let me just turn a few pages. Uh, and this is such easy stuff, comparatively. And what's so weird is that when I was at Alabama during yeah. the summer time, yeah. I was working with some people that were planning to be uh, high school math teachers. Right. And they had to take some different stuff where they can see money out. Right. And I asked them uh, for which was harder. And I was expecting, you know, getting the cue. They said linear algebra was so much harder. And they said differential equations was easy. I'm like, I want to know who you've been talking to right. or what you've been reading. Right. That's interesting. I would like to find what book they use for differential equations. Uh, if they had a book, that would be nice to have because I swear the book that I had was just so easy to understand. I mean, I think I told you, I would read through it the night before the class. We met yeah, five days a week. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, I could follow what it was saying better than I could the instructor, the professor. He was... Might as well written in Latin. Yeah. And uh, and yet this is one I was told, oh yeah, this is a great book. This one here is great. But of course this is yeah. Larson. Yeah, really Larson's good. pretty good. I don't think he has a busy cue. Okay. Let me uh, also make the announcement because other folks hopefully maybe listen to this at some point. Um, please do your student course evaluations. They are open now. You can do them if you have any questions about how to do it. The first thing I would suggest, read your emails, the Lawson State emails. I think there's an email that was sent probably a few weeks ago. Maybe no, it's, it's more, recent more recent than that. Like maybe last week. Oh, really? Okay. Because one we got said the students have been notified, and then maybe they just had done it. But yeah, I took it to be okay. So anyway, read your Lawson email. And if you can't get to that, which may be the case, Get with me, and I'll, I'll. It's pretty easy. Or get with one of the other students. That I most of them know how to do it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're beginning today. Uh, dot products on page two thirty. Uh, example five, top of the page, <coughs> section five point one. All right. Here we have some vectors. Let you wait. Let me get my pen. Blackened. Okay. Here's vector u equal two negative two. We're in two space even. Okay. Vector v. Yeah, no. <laughs> is five eight. And vector w is negative four three. One thing you said about that, I, I can conceive of someone teaching linear algebra almost from the basis of proofs. And if that were the case, I would find this not a very tedious. pleasant course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, tedious. Exactly. So if that were the case, yeah. The actual doing of the stuff isn't too bad. No. The proving everything. Yeah. That... Yeah, and tedious is a great word for it. So <laughs> it says, find each of these quantities. Okay? The first one is the dot product of U and V. What would that be? Six. <laughs> yeah, 10, 10 minus, 16. yeah, 10 minus 16, negative 6. B is U dot V times W. Yeah, that's it exactly. So that would be negative eighteen. Negative. Right? Yeah. Okay. And C is U dot two V or not two V. Okay.
negative 12. Okay? Now, you were doing it perfectly fine, except you could realize that you're two on the outside, there's two times two times three, two times three, two times three, two times three, two times three. I just like to work. Yes, I can tell. You can still do it, though. Okay. Now. That's what really. D. Okay. What's that? Is this 25? What? D? Okay. It is. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That's basically, thinking, you know, the square root and all that, just get rid of that because of the square, so it's just negative 4 squared plus 3 squared. Right. Yeah, that's it, exactly. It is, that's why I was going to say, w dot w, yeah. which is 16 plus 9, 25. All right, and E is U dot V minus 2W. Obviously, V minus 2W first. Second. Probably should do the V minus 2W first. You could, or. You could do that. Either way. I had thought we had already done. We did the first one. Yeah, we did the first so that, one. That does take out the second thing. Maybe six minus. Uh, and you just have to do these two. And I'm using negative eight plus negative six, which is negative 14. Is that a negative two? Second. Okay. Yeah. So that would be negative 6 plus 28, which would be 22, I hope. Yes. Okay. So several ways to do it, and I found that a little easier since we had already done one part of it. But the other part would be easy to, I mean reasonable to, but I think it would take a little more work. Now if we start doing this with force-based stuff, it just is a little... A little bit more steps. Yeah. <laughs> you just have... Yeah, but that's all. The steps aren't hard. They're just more of them. Okay. So, walk a mile in my shoes. Okay. Let's do example six. Okay. Use... Using the properties. Oops. I guess we were using the properties of uh, dot products. Oh, and they did it the same way you were starting to do it. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, you know, they were going to do V minus 2W first and then dot that. So uh, either way works. Okay. But I think the way we did it was maybe just a tad shorter. Okay. Given two vectors, U and V and R, N, U, V, both elements of Rn, this looks like a, oh no, here's something, such that u.u is 39, okay, u.v is negative 3, v.v, is equal to 79. Okay. Evaluate this. U plus 2V Why not? Yes, okay. Sigma, okay. V, 3U plus V. All right, <clears throat> now, um, the properties were the theorem, uh, five point three, but actually, there's some other things we can do 
extending those theorems. I, I was trying to recall if they had allowed us to do this, and I'm going to allow us to do this, okay? Uh, let's foil this baby, even though they haven't told us we could. This would be 3, yeah, u dot u. The reason I wanted to say that, they gave it to us. Right. right. Okay. And then that's the outer. I mean, that's the first. The outer is plus u dot v, which they gave us. And then we've got a plus 6 u dot v, which actually, and because remember u dot v is v dot u, that was one of the properties. Actually, we could have just done a 7 here. So why do more than we have to? Okay, let's just, we could have combined those like terms, the, those two inner terms, and done seven. Huh? I'll get around to it. Okay. And then the last is two times v dot v. And they already gave us each of these pieces. That's 3 times 39 plus 7 times a negative 3. Almost thankful for that. Plus 2 times a, wait, yeah, 2 times a 79. So without knowing anything more about you, we can still do this. That will be... I hope that's right. I did it too fast in my head. Yes, yes, that works. actually give that to us, but if you break it up and do step at a time, think yeah, about it, it. Is that. yeah. If it's in freaking the form, you know. Yeah, exactly. And and it does do and uh now they actually do it in extra steps. We don't like extra which steps. actually the extra steps almost do nothing but confuse me. But you know they they aren't really enlightening steps. <laughs> They're just steps. It, almost like they roadblocks rather than sort of stumbling blocks. Maybe. We demand. Yeah, we demand that you do it this way. Okay. Now, there's a little discovery here, and I think this is probably worth a do, so that's not goodbye. Okay. Uh, let's go back to your earlier question. Yeah, and I meant to uh, address that as soon as I saw that this is actually a different chapter. I think I'm just going to let the chapter, what was that, four tests? Was that what we did before? Whatever we were just in. That's going to be its own thing. And then your final exam is just going to be what we do in chapter five, which, guess what? Pretty easy stuff. <laughs> yeah, so far, it is. Great. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's going to be short. Okay, so... Be careful. <laughs> yeah. It, we're not going to have that much to cover, so... Well, you can give us, like, three problems from the first section. Okay. It's not going to be that. 
So. You're looking for more problems. Okay. So let's do the discovery. I'm, I'm sorry. I like, I like easy stuff. <laughs> really? What? How strange. Okay. U is 1, 1. And V is negative 4, negative 3. Okay. Calculate U dot V. That's pretty simple. What's that? Okay. And then it also says calculate the magnitude of U, which would be square root of 2, and the magnitude of V. Okay. Magnitude, by the way, always positive. Okay. All right. Formulate a relationship. Yeah. Okay. Well, if that two wasn't under a radical and it was negative, <laughs> you know, it's like it needs to be more than negative. Add it together. Yeah. I demand that it. <laughs> yeah, that, yes. Uh, I regret ever going over that section. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Formulate a conjecture about the relationship between the dot product and the two vectors of two vectors and their lengths. Okay. Um, I, I sort of know what they're getting at, but boy, there's nothing that's obvious from from that to me. Here's what they're getting at, I think, is what you see next. Well, no, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. If they had said... Wait, let's see. It says formulate a conjecture about the relationship between the dot product of the two vectors and the product of their lengths. Right. you got to multiply their lengths together. Yeah, and that would be two, uh, five root two. Okay. And... <clears throat> if you do, you have a calculator yeah, handy. Um, no. How big of a calculator? Do you do? Just do, multiply five times root two. So I can't do that in my head. I can't. Okay. Take a guess, but it would yeah. be a Okay, now, I think what they meant, uh, it would have made more sense if they had said the absolute value of the dot product. Okay? Right. And then I think you can say... Because if the, if the V were positive, you'd come up with a positive number. Yeah. Right. So... Here is, I think, what the conjecture was to be, that the absolute value of u dot v is always less than or equal to magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. They're, they're, they're pretty close. They're yeah, really pretty close. yeah. And there is a reason for that, and that's what's given next, okay? <clears throat> To define the angle theta between two vectors u and v in Rn, you use the formula for R2, which was that cosine theta at the bottom. No, the, the inequality. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't know how do you pronounce it. I think it's Cauchy Schwartz. Okay, that, that sounds better than Cauchy Schwartz. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's. Um, I'm pretty sure he's French. Augustin Louis Cauchy. Uh, yeah, French mathematician. At the bottom of the previous page. Uh, and usually the AU sound in, Fran in French, I think, is. Yeah. Uh, are, are a little bit 
stronger, almost an O sound. Okay. Uh, and, well, and sports is easy for Yeah. So since we don't have a French speaker in here to tell us, I don't know, let's say it, Koshi. Okay. Koshi. Almost like the city. Yeah. <laughs> he was he was Jewish. It was Koshi. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> okay. From R2, we already knew this one. If you turn back, top, let's see, where was it? Man, seems like they should have it in a block, but I don't see it in a block. can't believe that. But anyway, they were doing it at the top of well, sort of the top of page 229 we did it, but they act like we had done it. But anyway, here is the definition. Uh, U dot V over the magnitude of U times the magnitude of V. Okay. Now, you might say, what does that have to do with what we were doing before? Well, cosine is always between negative 1. Right. So therefore, uh, the absolute value of these two has got to be greater than a product of these is going to be greater than or equal to. So if you get to be one, that, that the numerator would be the same as the denominator and anything less than that. So it's got to be less than this. So that's the best I could figure of what they were trying to say. Or you could have said it this way without the absolute value. Uh, you dot v is less than or equal to no yeah magnitude u magnitude v less than or equal to minus magnitude u times magnitude of v that would be the, to include the minus sign in if you could have done that. To me, it's a lot easier to do the absolute value bars. Let it go. But for such a definition to make sense, however, the absolute value of the right-hand side of this formula cannot exceed 1. This fact comes from the famous theorem named after the French mathematician Augustin Louis Cauchy, and uh, he lived... Uh, 1789 to 1857 and just to to bracket that historically that was about the time our constitution was form, written that was 87 89 something around in there uh, about the time of the French Revolution by the way he was born right at near the beginning of that I think up to 1857 which is almost the war between the states yeah, that was 1860, so that's when he lived. German mathematician, 1843, so they didn't know each other, obviously. The uh, Schwartz would have been, what, 14 when <laughs> Cauchy died, so they didn't have any direct interaction, but he lived from through our war between the states and up through the end, past the end of war, World War I, so... It's, uh, he had a pretty lengthy life, then, didn't he? Koshi was what? Eight. Sixty-eight. That's not bad. And he was... Yeah, uh, 78. Huh? Have I done that right? 
I can't subtract. I can do dot product, but I can't subtract. Okay, that's eight. Eight from fourteen. No, six. Yeah, sixty-eight, and he was eight. And seventy-eight. Yeah, because she was sixty-eight, and he was seventy-eight. Okay, Schwartz. So the Cauchy Schwartz inequality basically says this. Oh, there it is. That was what they were fishing for. If u and v are vectors in Rn, then u dot v, absolute value of u dot v, is always less than or equal to the magnitude, the product of the magnitudes. Uh, where u dot v denotes the absolute value of u dot v. Wow, okay. Clever. Um, this also is almost like the addition of vectors, okay? The addition of two vectors is always less than or equal to the two if they were in the same line, okay? Right. Two vectors That's, like this. That makes sense because yeah. you, can, you can add them together and right. it won't be quite as Long in that direction. As if they were in the same direction. Because it's yeah. going in because the same direction. But if it's going in the same direction, it could equal it. But it, it can't be any longer. Exactly. And that's almost the same thing this is saying. That, that makes this make more sense. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And they do have a proof here. They, they start with u equals zero. And zero I, I think, yeah, the zero vector. And then you're going to be equal, okay, because the dot product of the zero vector with any vector is going to be the zero vector, and that's equal to the magnitude of the zero vector, which is zero times magnitude of any other vector. The product's going to be zero. So that one's pretty easy. Now, if u's not zero, and I think you also have to say v not zero as well, but they don't do that, then... Um, let t be any real number, consider the vector t u plus v. Okay, why is that true? T be any real number, consider the vector t u. Well, mostly because the dot product of two vectors is the square of the magnitude, so yeah, that's, that's got to be positive. So I think that's why that's true. Um, that would be t squared times u dot u. So it keeps it from being negative. What's that? So it won't be negative. Right. Um, Okay, I'll buy that. Because they're just numbers. All right, a rather bizarre, I think, kind of a way to go about the proof there, but I guess there may not be any other way. I mean, calling in quadratic formula and, and for some reason picking a T uh, and... I guess the only reason they picked a T is so you can guarantee that the dot product uh, that the that, that is positive. So now u dot u. What kind of T is it? It's a guarantee. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the I, I, I I. 
I'm still not really too keen on this. Maybe it, everything they're saying is true, but some. Uh, Yeah. It says because this quadratic is never negative. Why is that never negative? Okay, I know C is never negative and A is never negative because U dot U is a is the square root of the magnitude. And the magnitude is always positive. Right. So, so that would be the same. But v dot U dot v. U dot yeah, V dot V is never negative. But u dot v may be negative okay uh we've had dot products that were negative before look at uh a on example five okay uh and that t, could be negative huh can be any real number. right um because this quadratic is never negative It has either no real roots or a single repeated real root. Well, maybe it's. Uh, I wonder if it's because uh, v dot v. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Remember, where did they get this formula? They multiplied tu plus v times tu plus v dot product. In other words, you have the magnitude of the vector. No, no, that's not quite right either. Well, I was going to say. No, uh, uh, that's not good. If you're doing t squared times basically vector u squared for the dot product of u, and then you add that okay. to the yeah. dot product of v dot v, is that is won't that be bigger than two t? Yeah. Well, yeah. Here's so, the deal. It's what I was thinking. If you factor out the t, so to speak, right? Well, wait, whether you factor it out or not, tu plus v is a vector, right? And tu plus v is a vector. The dot product of a vector with itself is always positive because it's the square root of its magnitude, okay? Uh, go, yeah, go breaking, back. Breaking it up doesn't change things, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So therefore, it, yeah, it has to be. I, I saw that the first time I read it, but then I got bogged down in the other part. So that is not for negative. Okay. Now, if that is... Yeah. That is not for negative, right? Because this quadratic is not for negative. It either has no real roots... Are a single repeated root. Okay. Uh, but the quadratic formula implies the discriminant is less than or equal to zero. Okay. If it's equal to zero, you have a single double root. A, a one root that is a double root. Okay. Repeated root. Okay. Or, if it has no real roots, that means the discriminant is negative. So, therefore, it has to be less than or equal to that. Uh, <coughs> But your b is u dot v, so 4 times u dot v squared is less than, guaranteed to be less than 4, u dot u times v dot v, yeah. So, yeah, that follows from that. Okay. That's a pretty good form, I mean, thing. I... Not sure I would have come up with, up with it from scratch without a lot of head scratching. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to example seven.
Okay. Verifying the Koch Schwartz inequality. Cauchy Schwartz inequality. U. Now we're getting into tree space. You've been wanting to get the four. One minus one, three. <laughs> and V is two, zero, negative one. Okay. Cauchy Schwartz inequality says the absolute value of u dot v is less than or equal to magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Okay. So I guess first thing we need to do is what is u dot v? Negative one. Zero. Here. Okay. I just hit. I was trying to hit this button. And I hit that one. Okay. I have extra blob in there that I didn't want. There. Okay. So that's negative one. Absolute value of that is one. So we have that one is less than or equal to. Well, let's do this one. What's magnitude of u? Square root of 11. Yep. Square root of 5. And this is obviously, 1's obviously less than the square root of 55. By a long shot. Okay, so that wasn't a very even close. Okay. It's less than. You don't need to put the equal sign in there now. Okay. Um, the Cauchy Schwartz inequality leads to the definition of the angle between uh, two non zero vectors in any space. And that is what we used at the very beginning that the cosine of the angle theta is equal to between two vectors u and v is the product of their magnitudes divided by um, the dot product. Now, I'm sorry, dot product divided by the magnitude. I was going to say that won't work. Okay. Yeah. Yes. u dot v over magnitude u. Uh, Magnitude V. Okay. And that's good for any two vectors in any size space. Okay. Oh, and by the way, zero is less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi. Okay. We want to keep that uh, between zero and pi. In other words, one to one. Okay, zero cosine is one, and at pi it's negative one. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to example eight. We actually will calculate one, I think. The, oh, not quite. They're telling us the angle. Oh, no, you're calculating. Okay. Here's a vector u. This is in four space. I knew you wanted to get that. Negative four, zero. Two, negative two. Add the vector v is two, zero, negative one, one. Now, now, 
without looking at this too hard, I think you'll notice, if I've copied it right, that vector u is a multiple of vector v. In other words, they have the same, they're parallel to each other. They're actually in opposite directions because it's a negative 2. Yeah. So uh, vector u is twice the magnitude of v, but it's in the opposite direction. Okay, so I think we know what angle that's going to be. Zero. No, or no pi. Yeah, pi. Yeah, 180 or pi. But let's see if the formula tells us that. Okay. I didn't know what, if we were in radians or... Yeah. Cosine uh, theta, according to our formula, is a dot product of u and v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Okay, let's do what the magnitude of u is. I mean, the dot product of u and v is. Yep. Yep. Okay, wait just a minute. Be sixteen plus four. Yeah. Square root twenty four. Times eight. Is that what you said? No, no, I'm sorry. Six, six. Doubled one, not squared one. Okay. And that happens to be negative twelve, as you said in the numerator. Yes, that's exactly it. Well, the top's supposed to pass inside of the What's that? Yeah, okay, it's negative 1. Right, right. And cosine of negative 1, I mean, the <laughs> angle whose cosine is negative 1 is? 180. Yeah, pi. Okay, so that means theta has to be pi. And we saw that just by looking at it, that, that it would have to be that. Okay. Uh, sorry. Consequently, theta is pi. It makes sense that u and v should have opposite directions because u is equal to negative 2 times v. Okay. Now, note that because magnitude of u and magnitude of v are always positive, u dot v and cosine theta will always have the same sign. Moreover, because the cosine is positive in the first quadrant, negative in the second quadrant, excuse me, the sign <clears throat> of the dot product of two vectors can be used to determine whether the angle between them is acute or obtuse. Because if the angle between them is between 0 and pi halves, or 90, then the dot product is positive, okay? Uh, it actually is 0 at 90. And then anything beyond pi has to pi, the dot product has got to be negative. <clears throat> okay. Now, figure 5, 6 that just showed that shows that two non zero vectors meet at right angles if and only if the dot product is zero. Okay? We call two such vectors orthogonal. Okay. Or perpendicular. So, let me just go and write this definition down. I'll just set it. Two vectors u and v are 
in R N are orthogonal when and I think that should be if and only if uh, u dot v is equal to zero. Okay, that's the test for orthogonality, which I think we've had before, except it may have been in a different course. I just don't remember. We've done this so many times, so many ways. Okay, even though the angle between two, the zero vector and another vector is not defined. It is convenient to extend the definition of orthogonality to include the zero vector. In other words, the vector zero is said to be orthogonal with every vector, which, again, makes no much sense to me to be talking about a zero vector anyway. Right, how can it be orthogonal if it has no direction? Okay, but the dot product obviously would be zero. So let's do example nine. It seems like it has to be, uh, but yeah, but <laughs> the zero vector may be here and this other vector out here, so it doesn't have to be on it, but the dot product is still zero. It could. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. That's about as close as it could be. Right. So let's do example nine. I think it's pretty simple, but let's do it. Here's vector u. In fact, this is vector unit. Vector u is one, zero, zero. We're in three space now. And vector v also is a unit vector because it's zero, one, zero. Okay. What's the dot product between those two? Zero. Yeah, zero plus zero plus zero is zero. Okay. What else you got for? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Or you can do the dot products here. 1 times 0 is 0 plus 1 times 0 is 0 plus 0 times 0 is 0. Okay, so however you do it, it comes out being that. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get the B one here too. Oh, yeah, this is a little more involved here. Vector U, this is not a unit vector, is 3, 2, negative 1, 4. Yeah, vector v. I said that when you weren't here too. Okay, one negative one, one zero, one, one, one zero. You said that was my favorite. Yes. All right. Now let's do the dot product of those two. U dot v. For some reason, there it comes. Oops. Wasn't I was looking at Yeah. I was looking at the book to make sure I copyright and my hand just went doing whatever it wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that would be zero also. Okay. Now though those don't look at all similar to one another, they still happen to be orthogonal. Okay. Uh, certainly, the unit vectors in three space are orthogonal to each other. These, these two in four space are also orthogonal to each other, even though they're very, very, very different lengths. Okay. Now, I'm sorry. Yeah, 
well, uh, oh, I, yes, yeah, that is weird, I guess. Okay. I think it's weirder who thought of it. No, okay. <laughs> okay. Determine all the vectors in R2 that are orthogonal to 4, 2. We were looking for all vectors in R2, um, and let's call it V, all the vectors V in R2, so this will be V1, comma, V2. Okay, we're in R2, that are orthogonal to U, and U is the vector for 2. Okay. So it's zero vector, but we can't list that all. Yeah, well, I think that'll be incorporated in it. So, so let's just see. You get 4v1 plus 2v2 has to equal to zero. Those two vectors are perpendicular. That would have to be true, right? Right. Okay. Well, this would say that uh, 2v1 is equal to, or minus 2v1 is equal to v2. Would you say that would also be true? Yeah. Okay, so let's let v2 equal some parameter t. So this would be minus 2t. That would be all the vectors in R2 that are perpendicular to that. Okay. And certainly the zero vector is included. Right. And I mean, it makes sense, but it's kind of a weird thought what's that? process. That is a weird thought process. Different. Yeah, because of the variable that it's basically sort of. Okay, now, here's the other thing that's saying. If you think of the direction of the vector as being, especially in two space, y over x, right? Change of y over change of x. That would have a that's not quite the slope is change of y over change of x. Okay. That would be the slope of one half. The slope of this one would be 2. Okay. It should be. Yeah. I think I've said it backwards. No? No, it's the reciprocal, right? Because yeah. the slope has to be, or would it be negative 2? It has to be negative 2. Yeah, but, it's negative 2. But something is not working here. So it would be negative Wait, 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 wait. wait. So the negative 2t, how did you get that? Okay. So 4v1 plus 2v2 is equal to 0. So. 2v2 over divided by negative t, you get negative 2v1 plus v2. So it would be 2 equal to t. But then you got to get v1 in terms of t. Yeah, that's that that's where it has to be. You So V one should be T negative T halves, not two T. Yeah, that's it. That's why I was thinking like something's weird. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Negative two V one is equal to T. So V1 is equal to negative one-half T. That makes sense. There it is. So the slope of the slope of that vector would be one over negative one-half, which would be a negative two. So that's one-half, that's a negative two. Got it. 
Duh. Okay. Um, where T is any real number. Okay. Goodness. The brain's not working. What time is it anyway? I mean, it feels like it's so late. But it can't be, but. Almost 12. Almost 12. So we go to 12, 15. Okay. The cauchy schwartz inequality can be used to prove another well-known inequality called the triangle inequality. And that's theorem 5, five, five that we're going to get to. The yes. name triangle inequality is derived from the interpretation of the theorem in R2 illustrated by vectors U and V in this next figure. And that basically is kind of what I was doing to begin with. Let's see. I don't think this is what I want to do. There. This is what I want to do. All right. <clears throat> Pick a vector U. They picked one from here to there, say. Okay. We'll call that U. Okay. And we're going to add to that some vector V. How about that one? Okay. No, I picked the wrong U. Sorry. I was looking at the product. Okay. U was over here somewhere. That be U. And then what is the sum of U and V? Well, exactly. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. Right there. Here is then U plus V. Okay. And you can do this by... Your good old, yeah, uh, not trapezoid, uh, parallelogram. Yeah, parallelogram. Okay, now, and this is what we were saying earlier, that the magnitude of this U plus the magnitude of V is always got to be greater than the magnitude of U plus V. It could be equal, uh, yeah, so it's got to be greater than or equal to. Same, same direction. direction. Exactly. Um, and along the same line. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, when you consider those two magnitudes and the lengths of the two sides of the triangle, you see the length of the third side is always less than or equal to, so you say this is always less than or equal to magnitude of U plus magnitude of V. Okay. Um, they show it in R3, look in the book. Okay, I'm not going to try to draw that in uh on the board here, okay. It illustrates that the triangle inequality for which U and V in R3 are in any Rn, and let me go back to this, and we'll write the triangle inequality. If U and V are vectors in Rn, then the magnitude of U plus V is less than or equal to the magnitude of U plus the magnitude of V. Alright. Now, they do a proof with this one, too. <clears throat> and how they start is take that left-hand side of the inequality and square it. 
Okay? So if you were to square this, that is going to be the dot product of those two vectors with themselves. In other words, u plus v dotted with u plus v. Sorry, that's the magnitude squared. Okay? Okay. Now, if you multiply those out, foiling, that would be u dot u plus 2 v dot u plus v dot u. I mean v dot v, v dot v, which is magnitude.